Hey guys, welcome back to The Compound. Today's video is a special one because I'm once again teaming up with my pals Gary and Rod to paint another prototype for a project they've been working on for the past few months. As you can probably tell by the thumbnail and the title of this video, the project that I'll be working on is the unreleased Chaos Effect Ultimasaurus. Now I do enjoy repainting your standard Mattel dinosaur, but there's just something fun and challenging that I love about having a project like this to work on. And this one is particularly special because it was never released and it's such an iconic character from the Jurassic franchise and being able to work on this to create the paint master so Gary can then reproduce it and make it available to fans of the vintage Chaos Effect line to help them fill that Ultimasaurus size hole in their collection is truly special to me and I'm very honored to have the opportunity to work on this. So Rod and Gary have managed to get this figure as close as they possibly could to the original prototype with all of the basic articulation it would have had as well as a removable dino damage piece. Um, it's hard to grasp just how insanely cool this thing is until you have it in your hands, but just holding it unassembled, it's super solid, really massive, and insanely cool. Uh, once it's all assembled and painted, I'll do some comparisons at the end of the video with a few of the Chaos Effect figures I have, just so you can get an idea of, you know, the scale of this thing. Anyway, this video is basically just a behind the scenes look at the painting process, and it'll probably be a longer video than usual, so prepare yourself for that. There's a lot to cover, and it'll be difficult to fit this all into my standard video runtime. So with with all of that said, let's go ahead and get started. So as I mentioned before, my job is to make the paint master so Gary can make stencils of my deco and then easily mass produce a run of these in a timely manner to get them out on the market and in your hands. Now, as a lot of you know, if you do a Google search of the Ultimasaurus, you'll find a few grainy images that look like they were taken with a potato. And while those pics are okay for getting a general reference, they aren't going to really be any help for me here because I want to try and match the patterns and the colors as close as I humanly can uh, to the original prototype. And to help us achieve that, an anonymous collector was kind enough to provide us with several HD shots of the original prototype from several different angles, and I'll be using those images off camera as reference. They won't make an appearance in this video because I'm not at liberty to share them, but just so you know that the patterns that I'm doing on this figure are as close to the prototype as they can get. So the first pattern I'm gonna do is the asymmetrical deco on the underside. To get that pattern, I put a piece of parchment paper over the image on my computer and then traced out the pattern. Now I'll cut it out and then retrace it over a piece of blue painter's tape and then cut that out and then carefully peel it away from the parchment paper and I've got my sticky stencil that will stick to the body of the figure. Now it's just a matter of lining it up to the figure and masking off the rest of the body so as not to get any overspray on anything that I don't want paint on. Now we'll go over the paint set I'll be using. Uh, since a majority of the figure is already printed in the base gray body color, the only things that we'll really need to paint are the red, the black, and the yellow deco. Uh, for that, Gary and I decided on this paint set because we can both easily buy it off of Amazon and there won't be any need for mixing or anything like that. We can just use it right out of the bottle. And since we live in different states, I live in the south, he lives up north, uh, we have to make sure that we both have access to the same exact paints so the deco will stay uniform across all the figures in the production run. The first color to go down will be just a light coat of white primer and I'm going to be applying that on the spots that are going to get painted yellow. With the white primer put down I'll pop some yellow into my airbrush thin it down and then apply the first coat of yellow, drying it in between coats to ensure each layer is locked in. I'll repeat that same process for the yellow patterns on the face. 
With the yellow done, it's time to peel away the stencil and take a look at the lines to make sure they came out nice and sharp. Uh, they don't have to be perfect because I'll be adding a black border all around. So the black will be done by hand and it'll need to be straight and clean. You, you know, it's weird. The deco on this figure is all asymmetrical, which is very hard for my brain to accept. I subconsciously want everything to be symmetrical and mirror the other side, but that's not what the original figure has. So we're going to roll with it and I'm going to try my hardest not to be such a robot with the brush. All right, so now it is time for the grind and we're gonna be laying down a ton of black paint on this guy. So the entire back of the figure is covered in a shell of spikes and ridges with lots of little nooks and crannies. So to ensure even coverage and that I get into all those little areas, I'll keep the black paint in my wet palette so it stays nice and thin and flows on smooth. And I'll lay down a couple of thin coats and then lock it in with my heat gun. And of course, in classic Chaos Effect style, the yellow pattern on the underside is outlined with a black border. And the only way to really get clean straight lines is to steady your hand on the figure and slowly draw the black lines as straight as possible. This is definitely a hold your breath moment. If you're a shaky Jake like me, this right here is a massive challenge to try and get straight clean lines. Somehow I managed to do it and it came out really clean, so I'm happy with the way the black lines look. Uh, I've got the shell and the underside done and now it's time to uh, lock all this paint in. So I'm going to be throwing down some Army Painters matte varnish to seal all the painted parts. And while that's drying, I'll move on and knock out the rest of the pieces. So the legs are gray and then red from the calf down. So I'll mask off the uh, gray area and lay out my patterns using masking putty. I'm using the end of a paintbrush to sort of manipulate the putty and form it into the design that I'm going for. And then I'll simply take some red paint, thin it down in my airbrush and apply a couple of thin coats. Now I need to mask off the yellow patterns on the face and for that it's the same as the legs just getting some silly putty and planning out the patterns and then uh, lay the putty down on the face. Once I'm sort of happy with the placement then I can grab the airbrush and I can paint the red area and kind of fill all the areas around the masked off parts. Uh, the reason I use my airbrush with the yellow is because yellow is a pain in the butt to paint by hand and it goes down much smoother with the airbrush. So this will be way easier for Gary to do it because he's not having to do all of this little stuff. He can just make the stencil, pop it on, boom, boom, boom with the airbrush and, you know, be ready to rock and roll. So while I've got the head piece out, I'll go ahead and hit all the black deco on it. I'll paint the uh, black outlines along the yellow and then hit the horns, the beak and the side spikes on the uh, side of the head. So I'm gonna jump back over to the legs and we're gonna go ahead and finish uh, the rest of the deco off on those things. So I'm gonna paint the black outline that separates the red from the gray. And while I'm here, I'll go ahead and hit all of the claws on both feet. So the legs are done for now and looking good. I will return to those in a minute. I've got some more deco I need to put on them, but for now I'm gonna go ahead and varnish uh, these things up, set them aside and move on and paint the dino damage piece. This is the same as the main body section, just uh, hitting it with a couple of coats of black and then I'll blast it with my heat gun and hit it with some varnish. Uh, and then I'll grab the arms and block in the claws on those things while I'm here. Next little piece that needs uh, some paint is the end of the tail. Uh, for that, I've masked it off with a little thin triangle with some painter's tape and I'm giving it a couple of coats of red. And then I'll go in and hit all of these side spikes with black. Once the paint's dry, I can then glue this thing into the tip of the tail. All right, so now we're gonna tackle the inside of the dino damage spots. And this will be white bones with red meat. Pretty simple colors, but applying them will take some patience. So first off, I'll mask off the black areas around it that I don't want white paint to get on. And then I'll take the white and shoot it through my airbrush and apply a couple of thin coats to that. Once the white is down, I go back in with red and with a very fine tip brush, very carefully 
color in the meaty sections. Now this takes a lot of patience and a very steady hand because I don't want to get any of that red paint on the white. I want it to be applied very clean and very smooth. Uh, and then I'll dry it, seal it, and then cut the black areas back in to give it a nice sharp appearance. This is a an extremely stressful uh, thing to paint on this thing right here. And I know Gary is gonna absolutely love painting this. So uh, have fun with that, dude. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna jump back over to the red and mask off the neck area. And I'll hit that with some red paint. A couple of thin coats should do the trick. And then of course, outline uh, the area that separates the red and the gray with a black band. For the mouth pieces, they are printed in a white flex resin. So I just took some flesh and painted the tongue and the gum lines, and then I'll take some super glue and glue them into place. And with all that done, now I can assemble the head section, and this guy is really starting to come together. Uh, next up will be the black stripes running down the body. And to make that a little easier for me, I built this uh, easel stand thing out of cardboard so I can rest him on it at an angle. It'll make applying the stripes a lot easier. So this part is another one of those grinds of painting, especially painting stripes. And uh, this guy has several stripes of all shapes and sizes running down the sides of his body, as well as his arms and his legs. So what I'm gonna do is just start at the top and work my way down, trying to get them as close as I can to the original. For the sake of time, I'll speed this part up because even though it does seem quick and easy in the video, uh, it took me about two hours to do just one side. I had to take several breaks in between just to walk away I had to go get my kid at school and do stuff like that you know adulting but um, you know it's it's good to just kind of walk away for a minute take breaks because this kind of uh, this kind of tedious deco can really make you go crazy so for the arms and the legs um, since there's more room to work with on these it's you know easier to hold them I actually sketched out the stripes first with a pencil and then I went back over it and then colored them in with the black paint but once these parts are done, I'll assemble the figure and then give it a couple of coats of the varnish to really make sure that paint is locked in and it'll survive the trip back up north to Gary. And then after about a week's worth of painting and filming, this bad boy is finally done and it's one step closer to going into production for fans of the Chaos Effect line to enjoy. So we got a fun little area set up here with two Outpost Chaos sets you know locked together and you can check it out here from all angles and see it in all of its 90s glory the uh, you know dino damage is smooth and it works awesome and it's just a, the overall presence of this guy is just going to look great next to a complete chaos effect collection and speaking of which i, I don't have many uh, you know chaos effect figures uh, but i'll bring a few that i do have in so you can kind of see a size comparison you know between the ultimasaurus and the other figures and it's just so awesome how well all of these these colors just pop together and they just look so insanely vibrant I absolutely love it I haven't been collecting vintage much lately but you know having this Ultima Source in hand is really making me want to hunt down the other figures in the line uh, but we'll do uh, one more final uh, modern comparison here it is next to the Hammond collection Alan Grant and you can see just next to him that this thing is massive so it's just so cool uh, but before I sign off I just want to do a quick rundown of the articulation so the arms are on ball joints and you get a nice range of motion with those and obviously it wouldn't be a Kenner Jurassic Park figure without a removable dino damage piece uh, the mouth uh, it can open and close and the legs are on disc joints so they can go you know backwards forwards you know up and down whatever uh, pretty simple design with a few modern tweaks that really it really does take this thing to the next level i also wanted to note that this figure will come with a custom chaos effect box and uh, that box was designed by andy harness and uh, just a lot of very talented people in the jurassic community you know have been working on this to make it the best vintage inspired ultimasaurus figure out there and you know the fans are truly doing the best work when it comes to this franchise so I hope you guys enjoyed this little behind the scenes look at how the paint master for this was created. Be sure to go and follow Gary over on Instagram at Surat Tech to know when this will go on sale. And while you're there, go ahead and give Rod and Andy a follow. I'll put all of their links down below in the description box. So if you need more Jurassic related content from yours truly, 
you know where to find me. The links will also be down below. That's all I've got for this video. You guys take care, and I'll see you around the compound.